towering ziggurat, a contemporary temple for the veneration of modern art. This is the Tate Modern's new extension, all 10 stories of it. So vast, the gallery hasn't quite finished raising the 260 million pounds it all cost. Its first female director, Frances Morris, says the new space will give her the chance to put very different art on show. Less white, less male. Well, of course, we have addressed the gender balance and the collection and art history is full of great women who have been overlooked, but it's full of art from other parts of the world that's been overlooked from the, the point of view of London and the Western canon. So artists from Africa, from the Middle East, from Asia, in dialogue with more familiar practices from the UK, from Europe and North America. And it's the first museum that's going to be devoted or have a particular space devoted to live art. What does that actually mean in practice? Well, the, the whole of our uh, ground floor, the old oil tank spaces, the transformer galleries, are devoted to art that exists in, in the moment that you experience it. So performance art, real people, enacting work in real space. It's that sense of it that art's an invitation to think about the world in a different way. Uh, that's the magical thing, I think, about this new building, really. It's a really infinite sort of space, isn't it? Artist Patrick Brill, better known as Bob and Roberta Smith, agrees to give me a magical mystery tour of the gallery and its contents. As you say, it, it, it is as if it's infinite. The great th visual thing about it is that the, you can't work out what plane anything's in no. after a while. So Shukair is this Lebanese artist. She's, uh, she's uh, 100 this week. Wow. And this piece, which is taking an idea about abstraction, but actually looking at it in an architectural way. Mm. Absolutely beautiful piece of work. And I think that's one of the real ambitions of this, uh, of Tate Modern, this new opening out of Tate Modern, is to look at artists from around the world and try and put together the story of art around the world. This is a great piece. This is David Madala. David Madala was actually right in the centre of this kind of movement uh, called Fluxus, and it was all it, it, it was all about exploring art, which is in a way here today, gone tomorrow. But it's so kind of smooth. If the art's smooth, ambitious. The building more than does it justice. The soaring lines and innovative brickwork dovetailing with Giles Gilbert Scott's original structure. I think it's a triumph. I think it's much better than the same architect's work on the rest of the tape, which I don't like. Um, and it's a joy to see a building that isn't solid walls of glass. You see it surrounded by these uh, blocks of glass flats. And um, I think they're a disaster in London terms. The surface of this thing is so interesting. It's very unusual because it's brick. This is a skin over a concrete frame. Also, it, it goes into the brickwork of the Giles Gilbert Stock Power Station and sort of addresses it. The interior is, is um, spectacular, um, and it's largely because of the unusual shape of the building, which actually is not purely decorative. It gives a good spatial, um, spatial movement inside the building. And the, the, the light is extraordinary because you've got, you've got these ribbon windows which give you sort of fairly conventional light but you've also got areas where the, the light comes through the brickwork so you get a dappled effect. A retreat then from the hard hectic world outside here you can even have a snooze. <laughs> it's all got terribly out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> 